that decision was not the right decision Abi, because God has told them not to mingle with Moabites. Moabites were not people that must enter the temple of God. But because there was bread in Moab, or perceived bread in Moab, the man had to carry his family and they migrated to Moab. One thing God is showing us again and again is that even when there is famine in our place of calling and posting, it is not a reason to migrate. When there is famine, when there is famine, every famine God allows in a Bethlehem is for a temporary time. It's not a reason to change our location. It's not a reason to change our mood. It's not a reason to take a decision for our own personal survival. God who brought the family is able to end it and restore us back. And also see that sometimes, even as God's servants, as God's people, we take decisions to look for Moabite escape routes whenever there is family in our Bethlehem. And it looks logical. So look, if this church is not working for me, let me move. It looks logical. If I'm not getting acceptance in this particular community, let me change. If my message is not being acceptable, let me hold tight. It is, there's always a Moabite alternative anytime there is family in Jerusalem, anytime there is family in Bethlehem. And Moab will always be the immediate attraction. Very easy to go. So I saw a limit and said, look, I will be foolish. I will be logical. I will be reasonable. I, will want to, I don't want to die in famine. And I want to say again, it's better to die in famine in Jerusalem, in Bethlehem, than to die in plenty in Moab. There is a record of those who die in famine in Bethlehem that is acceptable in eternity than those who live in flagrance and joy in Bethlehem, in, in, in Moab. The Elimelech packed his things and he moved. Unfortunate for him. Unfortunately, his family had to follow him. Again, a very, very important for us that those who take leadership role must be careful of the decision we take. Other lives hanging around our neck. One decision that we take today, five other people might depend on it to survive. So if the decision goes wrong, maybe several other people have gone wrong. If the decision goes right, other people might have gone right. So as mothers, a single decision we take today, children will follow us, even in plan. As fathers, a single decision we take today, several other people hang on it. Sometimes even as Every one of us as leader in our own right, some other life depend on us. Some other people consciously and unconsciously are watching us. They are attracted to us and they're going to be following. So as a limited mood, five other people follow us. It's why? It's two children, four other people. And they went to Moab to enjoy greener pasture, to take a break from God's presence, to take a break from the things that is not comfortable. Let me just have a break. I'll be back. And every time a man goes to Moab from Bethlehem, he promises to return. So don't worry, Jesus, I'll be back. Just a moment. Just a minute. I'll return back. Don't worry. After my wedding, we'll be back. After my university, I'll be back. After I have hit this business or contract, I'll be back. After I've enjoyed for a while, I'll be back. Just give me this time. I'll return back. Now, verse 3. The Bible says, Elimelech now means husband died, and she was left with her two sons. Unfortunately for a little he died in Moab. He was looking forward to survive, but what happened to him? He died. And it has been seen from time to time. Every time we leave God's presence because of famine, because of temporary discomfort, every time we leave commitment to the Lord, every time we leave our place of posting, every time we leave our place of calling, every time we leave what God has shown us to do because of temporary famine, the famine could be Delay, the family could be lack, the family could be anything that will just not make us to be comfortable. We don't end always well in the place we sojourn. Elimelech couldn't return, unfortunately. And for, unfortunately, again, the two sons got married and the two sons died. The, the, it, in fact, as if the devil was all out that look, them just get an opportunity to let this man take a leave from the Lord and will destroy his destiny. I saw the waves of darkness. I was talking with that pastor yesterday and said, look, this land, you must not give up. The Lord is going to turn this land open. You must labor. You must continue to give all the attention and commitment even when every door seems to be closed. Because the devil knows, once the man God calls, gives up, he's going to wreak terrible havoc. 
the devil was all out that since Elimelech has changed at his location that God has posted him, I'm going to destroy his destiny. Who was to be eliminated? Because God had a purpose for his time. There were many people in this place. There were many people that also left Bethlehem. But because Elimelech had a mandate over his head, he became an attraction to God. So the devil now said, since you left God's place, I will not let you return so that the purpose of God for your life will not be done. He killed him. And God had no choice. He, the shield of protection of God removed because you have left his presence. The Bible says, when we break the head, the serpent will have a bite. He saw, and he knows that if his sons return back home, what will happen again? They may return to the purpose of God. He killed the sons without having another source of replacement. But God was merciful. Then suddenly Naomi now was in chance. Naomi suddenly realized, why should we dwell in backsliding for long? I'm going back home. And again, sometimes when we have disobeyed the Lord and God has spared us by mercy and He spared Naomi. There must be a quick action to return back home. We must run. We must run as a law. Naomi said, daughters who had married my children before, thank you for all you have done. I'm going back home. And so verse 8. Sorry, verse 6. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how the Lord has visited his people in giving them bread. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So there is a news that reached Naomi that bread had returned to that year. You see now, their family was not forever. It was a period. Now, the people they left there, they were still living. The people that departed, they had died. So, I want to say again, the Lord has promised there will be bread again in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. There will be bread, the bread of life, the bread of comfort. The bread that will give joy, the bread that will give life eternal, it will return back. And I want to say about Jerusalem right now. First, even in our country where we dwell, there will be bread of life again in the UK. Mm -hmm. The bread bring, big, fresh from God's presence. It was there before thousands of years, and it was being given and shared all over the world. And the world partook of this bread, and the world was transformed. Now the bread there was now there's a period of famine. The family of God's word. There's a period of family. The family of San Murali. The family of San System. The family of right governance. The family of everything that is good and godly. For the Lord has spoken. You will suddenly hear news. Amen. That bread has returned to bread. Amen. And so Nehomi now said, Ha! I can no longer stop. Good news for those people who endure in prayer, in laboring, in commitment to God. Why there was famine. But then, in case you have gone away from the Lord, in case you have said, well, things are not that easy, let's compromise a little bit away. The Lord still has a good news like he had for Naomi. Naomi decided to return. And Naomi said, I'm going back, I'm running. In fact, it wasn't re she wasn't ready to look at any other person. She was going. The other two ladies said, can we follow you? And again, I saw another lesson God is showing us there. Whenever there is a good news in the, to God's presence, everyone must run into the place of the news, genuinely running after the Lord. They said they will follow. Now we said, in fact, I'm not bothered about you now. I'm not going there to enjoy. I'm going there to serve, even if he needs to die. Then one of the wives said, okay, thank you. I can't go again to suffer. I want to go back to my high dogs. She left. The second, Ruth said, no, no, Naomi. And I want to read that scripture before we close. Ruth 1, 16. And Ruth said, do not entreat me to leave you or to return from following after you. For where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. Let the Lord do so to me, and more so, if aught but part thee, if aught but death part thee and me. And when Naomi saw she was steadfastly minded to go with her, she left speaking unto her. Ruth said, no, 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 no. I'm not going back. I want to follow you to the land of Bethlehem. I said there is something about your family. I want to be part of it. 
I said there's something about your future. I've heard so much about this, your generation. And I do not want to miss out. I had the opportunity, even though my husband died, but now that I had had an encounter to contact with you, allow me to go all the way with you. I've had a bread in Jerusalem. And I saw Ruth followed after the woman until they got to Jerusalem. The end of Ruth was the fact that Ruth became part of the progenitors of the Lord Jesus Christ. 